Hello and welcome back to Everybody Hates Barney. And I'm actually going to try and snipe the enemy leader here if I can. Oh, there we go. Got her off her mount. That's pretty nice. And, well, I'm actually kind of thinking right now that it would be pretty cool. I don't know. I actually... That, that's, that's the funny thing. I actually don't know. I, I think it's probably going to be impossible for us at this point. Because of, you know... Our, uh, our current situation, basically being at war against pretty much everyone, has sort of railroaded us into a certain direction, and we can't really decide on something different. I mean, I, I think in general, if the game was a little bit more flexible, I think we would probably be able to, but as it stands right now, I don't think it's actually going to happen and you may be you may be wondering right now what, what is he talking about what is he talking about yeah because i obviously haven't actually elaborated and my apologies for that sorry <laughs> uh, i sometimes i have a thought in my head and i i'm just i'm just talking about that thought and i don't actually elaborate on what the thought is anyway i'm talking about marriage i'm talking about marriage for barney because obviously if i am um well, basically, if he if he is unlucky, right? If he is unlucky, we are done. You know, we are one hundred percent done. Because no matter if you know um, he dies today, tomorrow, or next year, or in, in the next ten years, or whatever, there is nothing I can do once that happens. He is just out of here. He is just completely removed from the game, which I have to say is a huge tragedy, of course. However, and now this is obviously a big, I'm actually, I'm actually considering just donating all of this. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to donate all of it, even the food. I actually don't, I don't need the food and uh, that's not really necessary for me. But yeah, anyway, the point is, I actually think it is impossible for us to become, uh, or should we say, for us to court anyone specific and I feel really really uh, kind of saddened by this uh, to a to a pretty great degree not because I particularly care about you know having a spouse or anything like that but just because it does limit us greatly right so the only thing that we could really do and I'm not entirely sure if this is even also a possibility and that is actually making it so that Maybe we would have the ability to marry a rebel, uh, rebel vassal, but that is a very rare use case. I don't think that's probably going to work. But as it stands right now, I am going to be—I'm going to basically have an infinitely difficult time even seeing, uh, even seeing a uh, a potential spouse. I think anyway. We've just got an impale, which is obviously fantastic. This is super, super good. I am uh, probably maybe maybe the biggest fan of impale in the world. I don't actually know. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, should I get some more steward skill? Should I get some more steward skill? Should I get some more riding skill? Some more riding skill might actually be kind of good. Um, we could get some more polearm skill. We could get some more one-handed Charm is obviously not really something that I am particularly needing at the moment. And I'm thinking Stuart. I think I think Stuart, because we, we currently don't have anyone that does Stuart. And I am the I am the person, you know. I am the person actually doing that. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. That's close enough. There's two. Okay. Hmm. Uh, maybe I bit off a little bit more than I could chew here, but this guy is actually a part of a minor faction, so I, I, I mean, I technically could leave, but that's no fun, is it? Let's go. Let's go and actually see whether we can achieve victory against against the odds, actually. Pretty significant odds here. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, I have kitted this guy out. He does have gear, so don't worry about that. He's not running around with just absolutely, you know, terrible stuff. He does have armor. He is a... Um, a horse archer, basically. I've given him a, a pretty good mount. I've given him a bow, which is relatively decent. 
uh, some nice arrows, a very, very good sword, very good shield, and great armor. Um, he's very well equipped actually right now so i am very pleased i'm very pleased and hopefully he's actually going to prove himself to be extremely extremely useful to us oh nice headshot actually was that a headshot it wasn't i hit him in the shoulder but that still did 293 damage wow okay that's actually kind of insane okay well let's do some damage oh no never mind okay okay yeah these these moments oh see now it, did you I mean, you obviously didn't hear that, right? You probably didn't hear that, but I heard it. And uh, basically, if you didn't hear it, the, the shield blocking sound, the shield blocking sound played in my ears at that exact moment. But it doesn't matter because we have Impale. All right, so we're going to charge our horse archers. Unfortunately, the enemy does seem to be playing very, very passively at the moment. I, I don't know. I don't even really mind that. But when they play passively, we do have to be much more aware of what we're actually doing. Because defensive AI, they are very much better than offensive AI. When they're, de when they're defensive, you do have to be very, very careful. Because sometimes they can actually fight back and do very, very much damage to you. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to put our people into a loose formation. Someone actually did suggest that we get some kind of AI mod to make the AI better. And, uh, well, to a certain degree, I, yeah, I would definitely agree with you, for sure. Absolutely, I would definitely agree and say, yeah, it would probably be a good idea for me to do that. However, because the majority of this playthrough has been played with basically native gameplay mechanics, I'm just gonna continue that way for the moment. Maybe sometime in the future, there will be a time where we go into a, a another challenge similar to this one, and we try to do something, um, you know, with much harder settings. Like we, you know, we we use RBM or something like that. We use Forbury. If RBM and Forbury work together, I don't even know whether they do. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, that they do, and uh, you know. Uh, a number of other things that we could potentially install as well. But obviously we do have to be careful with every single mod that we actually get. Because Bannerlord is... Well... Bannerlord is Bannerlord. And it's very, very fickle indeed. They, you know, it is one of those... It's one of those games that doesn't really take very well to being modded. And uh, it can have a lot of incom incompatibilities very, very easily. And, um, yeah, even even mods that are uh, relatively lightweight can cause problems sometimes. So, you know, usually that's why I, yeah, especially with a series like this, I kind of wanted to just play things very, very straight up. Uh, I didn't want to be super adding in, you know, like 50 different mods or whatever, because I feel like it just, it just increases the chances that the the save is going to get corrupted or something like that. I, I've had that happen before in only an episode two. And that was with Banner Kings, hilariously enough. A long time ago, I was playing Banner Kings in, uh, with the uh, with the Europe mod, with the Europe mod, uh, the map mod, that is. And uh, I, I was really psyched, actually, to do, the, to do the, the, the series initially. I did one episode. Everyone was very excited about it, and then I went to record the second episode, and it just said to me, Oh yeah, your save is corrupted, you can't do anything about this. And I, I tried reloading a bunch of different, you know, because obviously I have autosaves and stuff, but yeah, that it made no difference. So there was something fundamentally wrong with the save or some mod that I had, but I only had those mods installed as far as I'm aware. So yeah, so that's when I was kind of like, okay. <laughs> You know, uh, that's why I'm very, very careful with what kinds of mods we actually install. Because I don't really want to have a, a situation like that happen before. You know, that, 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 that did actually happen before. So, anyway, there is a wonderful victory for us. Wow, we basically did not too bad at all. And look at our, look at our leadership skill. Look at our leadership skill. It's actually leveling up. We're almost 150, which is actually insane. Going to be letting this guy go. Going to be taking this guy prisoner, of course. Letting the minor faction vassal go is is just me 
well, just me randomly doing whatever, to be honest, because there is actually no point in me uh, executing them, you know, as I've said before. Uh, and unless they have changed that, which I would probably doubt, but unless they've changed it, um, there is no point in actually doing that because they are infinitely respawning. So, you know, that's the reasoning behind it. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of some sheep and some cows and some of these hogs and everything, and then we're absolutely fine. There we go. Okay. So what I'd really love right now is I would love a rebel town. That is what I would love right here. Don't know whether we're going to get one. It's highly unlikely that we are, but it would be amazing. It would be the, you know, cherry on top to our wonderful situation that we've got going on here because we are we are actually doing very very well and I, I am I'm gonna say it okay I'm gonna say that we are doing very very well even though it is probably going to get me defeated or something like that because whenever I'm you know feeling confident shall we say uh, something like this always happens where I potentially just get you know ambushed at the worst possible moment and then it's just like oh yeah as well there it is there's the there's the karma for me saying that or what have you and yeah that's the kind of thing that happens anyway let me actually just see do you think i can actually catch up with this guy without this fellow actually helping yep that's close we can enough. that's actually perfect this is this is literally sublime this is one of the the best locations that i have ever found in regards to enemies just popping out of nowhere and basically being right here. I mean, look at this guy right here. This is so funny. Okay, I'm actually going to look at his... Wait a minute. I'm just going to look at his... Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that does not work. We should probably just type in his proper name. There we are. Aha. <gasps> uh -huh. This guy is a member of the Ruler's Clan. Yes, indeed. All right, that's going to be very interesting. Okay, funnily enough, the Northern Empire is not at war against anyone but us, which I find to be a very interesting, very amusing situation for them to be in. Because, well, they're probably, maybe, even the weakest faction right now. And the reason why they're the weakest is because we have been killing them off, you know. We've been killing off quite a few of them. And I find it quite funny that none of the other factions have thought to themselves, hmm, looks like, you know, looks like old old Jeffrey over there is looking a little bit a little bit doddery in his old age, looking at the Northern Empire, of course. And, uh, you know, I always find it quite strange that they have not decided to take advantage of that. Very strange, very strange. Anyway, you know, the weirdness aside, I am going to try and murder these guys. There we go. Nice. Oh, 888. Isn't that lucky somewhere? Isn't that a lucky, lucky number somewhere? Well, hopefully it is going to be lucky for me. Hopefully I'm not going to get lanced in the face or something like that. That, that, that. You know, funnily enough, that actually hasn't happened for quite some time, which is very surprising. Usually it happens to me almost all the time. But this time around, not so much. Is that an enemy there? No, that's that's my, my people. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is actually really funny. I'm not used to this, actually. I'm really not used to this. And bear in mind, this is as someone that has been mostly playing without RBM for the majority of my time playing Bannerlord because I just generally didn't actually like RBM that much. Uh, obviously, my opinion on that has completely changed because I actually love RBM now. Um, but, you know, you live and learn, as it were. You know, you live and learn. Sometimes the things that you don't really like do become something that you love later on down the line. And, uh, you know, it's always nice to actually have that change because it's actually staggering how much better certain things are with, with RBM. Obviously, my, um, my, my one true love, which, of course, are throwing weapons, they are completely gutted with the RBM combat module, so... Generally, I am not a big fan of that, but you obviously don't have to play with the combat module if you don't want to, you know, you don't actually have to play with that. So, you can technically just, you know, get the AI, get the AI module, and then you're you're going to be pretty good. Okay, wait, I, sh I just need to kill this guy. There we go. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and, and this is exactly the reason why I have said to you so many times, if we can just get impaled, then everything's gonna be fine. And the reason why is right before us, right there. I did 315 damage to that guy. And the funny thing about that, he was behind his shield. He was behind his shield. He had his shield raised. And I was able to penetrate the shield. So basically he had no protection. He had no protection. A bit risky for me, personally. A bit risky, but... You know, that was, it was good enough, right? It was good enough. It was, it was somewhere that we literally just had to, you know, we just had to do it. I couldn't resist trying to penetrate him, you know? I mean, come on, would you, would you, would you have been able to resist that? I don't think so, right? Anyway, we are otherwise very, very pleased that we now have Impale. It is one of the best, best perks in the entire game if you're going to use thrown weapons of course and if you're not going to use thrown weapons then what are you doing because you got to use thrown weapons <laughs> uh yeah well all kidding aside you should really just use what, what whatever you want you know yeah i've used every single weapon type in the game i've used sledgehammers two-handed axes two-handed swords thrown weapons bows crossbows throwing axes i have actually used throwing axes as well and spears, obviously, lances. Yeah, all kinds of amazing, amazing things. And, you know, for the most part, all of them are really fun to use, you know? Uh, I mean, obviously, there are, there are my favorites, you know? Some things are much, much better than others in regards to my own personal preference, of course. But, um, yeah. You know, uh, a lot of the reason why Bannerlord, in my opinion, is a, a fun game to a certain degree, because obviously, let's face it, I feel like it doesn't particularly shine in the late game, because the late game is, you know, just a, you know, battle, siege, battle, siege, and there's very little, uh, should we say, counterplay for you to have, you know, so... If someone tries to besiege something of yours, you kind of just go, oh, okay, well, if they want to take it, then they'll take it. And if they don't, then they don't. And then you can just take it back after that and so on and so forth, you know. And there's not that much tension. That's the reason why this particular challenge is really, really cool to me because it does make things have some form of weight. Every single action I take has a direct consequence. If I decide to attack this guy, you know, I'm just saying randomly, you know, this guy, quote unquote, you know, it could be anyone. But if I say, you know, attacking this fellow right here, I'm gonna get a disorganized state. And if I get attacked by this guy over here, shortly after that, we might have some problems. So there's always that opportunity, you know? There's always that opportunity for things to go south. And I actually That's personally really one. enjoy that. I love those kinds of situations because, you know, if there's one thing that I really don't like, uh, that is a conclusion that you can see from a mile away, you know. I don't mind that if you're, you know, uh, just very good at guessing, you know, where a particular movie ends, for example. If you can guess the, the movie ending, you know, then that's personally just fine. You know, if, you know, if that's fun for you, then you should definitely do that. But what I'm saying is I don't like seeing what is going to happen uh, in a game sense. You know, like, for example, in, in the situation, not from a story perspective, but in a situation like in Bannerlord or like in any, uh, should we say, grand strategy RTS sort of situation where you are very much further ahead, um, you know, far more powerful than your opponents, and basically things are just, you know, a steamroll at that point. And you kind of just go, oh, okay, yeah, well, I have full control over the situation, and uh, there's not much anyone can do to stop me. And those are kind of the moments when I then go, okay, yeah. 
that's going to be it for the series. You know what I mean? That's usually when I say that because there doesn't seem to be much that I can do. You know, there's nothing more to experience because I have reached the pinnacle of strength. That's basically what I'm trying to get at here, you know, because if you are indeed the strongest in the game, you know, we've we've seen that multiple times in the past where, where my own faction or the faction that I've joined is far and away the strongest by 10,000 combat strength or something similar to that effect. It just makes no sense to continue at that point because you are just that strong. Enemies cannot touch you. And uh, well, as I, I, again, that's the reason why I absolutely love this challenge because we are in, you know, situations where we we have to fight tooth and nail, pretty much. I mean, not in these situations right here at the moment because we're actually having a pretty good time of things. But you know, beforehand we were having some really big issues because of course I was. You know, I had to fight against so many people, uh, just myself basically a lot of the time. And I thought that was extremely riveting and really enjoyable to, 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 get, to get over that, you know, to, to get past that particular obstacle. I just think that's fun. I don't know. I just think that's fun. Anyway, let me see if I can actually hit this guy. Can I take him down? Nope. I did penetrate his shield, but unfortunately, there we go. There's the penetration. That's absolutely fantastic. And now we can hopefully... Oh, I, why am I so bad with my thrown weapons all of a sudden? You see this? I don't know. There we go. That went through his shield as well. That's hilarious. Okay, so yeah. Anyway, let's just charge everyone. I'm basically just going to go super, super fast here. Very, very big aggression now because it feels to me like the enemy is... Well, they're playing this very passively. I'm not sure why they would, to be honest. I mean, yeah, they do have the advantage while, while being in the trees. They have the height advantage. I mean, they're basically completely fine. You know, they are pretty much untouchable in this forest here, especially for our cavalry. You know, the archers are going to have a very easy time of, well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of my cavalry just run by now and just absolutely slaughter them. So maybe we don't have any problems. Ooh, I think that guy had my number, actually. That would have been pretty hilarious if he had actually managed to fire off that shot. I'm pretty sure he was aiming for my face. Because it is a pretty big face, of course. It is a pretty big face. Anyway, let's just speed things up. And I believe that is going to be it. I actually don't know who else. Ah, Mantios himself was actually still alive, surprisingly enough. Mantios is one of the strongest vassals in the Northern Empire as well, just bear that in mind. So, us being able to execute him is a pretty big deal. Alright, let's get some more of these guys, get some more of those. Um, I think I, you know what I think I really need to do? I need to go off somewhere. And I need to spend some time literally just standing in a place just accumulating prisoners. That's what I ideally need to do. Um, but unfortunately for me at the moment, that is not something I can do, I don't think. I mean, the only... Okay, this is actually going to sound really, really funny. But the only place that I can think of that is 100% safe is actually a bandit hideout if you can believe that because obviously i'm not entirely sure if i sneak into a town is that actually available is that actually like really available for me to to wait there can i wait there for an infinite amount of time or is waiting for some time not available in a town when we sneak in i'm actually not entirely sure but a bandit hideout would actually be slightly easier because I wouldn't actually have to worry 
about getting captured, which is obviously a pretty big deal. Um, well, it's not that big a deal because we don't actually lose anything from that. We just lose time and so on and so forth. But uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So look at this. As soon as the time has passed for the raid, let me just see. There we go. Then all we do is just wait until this. Look at that. We just we just wait, and we're not we're not on the map any further, and we have an entire day basically. We have twenty four hours worth of peace and quiet, and we don't actually have to worry about anything until the attack begins. And then all we have to do is just wait outside, and do it all over again. And in my opinion, that is a really, really efficient way of doing it. But obviously, you know, maybe there is a better way. Maybe there is a better way to do it. And I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be actually giving us anything dramatic. Because let's face it, maybe my prisoners are going to take way too long for us to convert anyway. And maybe it would be better for me to just run around. But as you can see, look at this. I've just gotten a Palatine Guard as well, which is actually fantastic. Oh yeah, Mantios needs to get executed. I actually almost forgot about executing him. Okay, well, there you go. That's fantastic as well. Okay, so we just have tier 4. We just have tier 4 people. Let's actually just see. Um, just for science sake, I want to see how much conformity we gain from now until the next time we get to attack the bandit hideout. So let's have a look. So his current conformity is 136. Okay. So... Um, let's just wait for a little bit longer. This guy is not going to attack us, not in a million years. And we're just going to wait here for a little bit of time. And, and now, as you can see, this guy is going to be completely moving past us because he technically cannot see us inside the hideout. So we can theoretically use this as a bit of a, well, shall we say, a bit of a campsite, a bit of a place where we don't really, you know, we're not going to get absolutely murdered, which is actually really nice, in my opinion. Anyway, so we we gained nothing. We gained no conformity with this guy. So I'm going to assume that other units were being prioritized. Okay. Yeah, well, that's obviously fine. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But I don't know which units are actually going to be prioritized, which is quite funny. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Don't know why, why it would be out of order. But apparently it is. Anyway. Let me see if I can make my way back to Northern Empire territory. Because that's where we primarily want to do our damage okay look at that we got scouting to 250 this is actually kind of crazy all right plus five percent damage by your troops when they are sent as attackers and plus ten percent damage by your troops this is actually a thing for for like uh auto resolves and stuff right so that's uh that's kind of interesting and i just hit my hand on my on my desk that's wonderful all right let's not do that uh, so plus 20% wounded troop recovery speed while in an army. Well, we're very, very rarely going to be in an army at the moment. And 10% damage to your troops while defending at your siege camp. Okay, this is all absolutely terrible. So we're just going to use the vanguard, I suppose. I think that sounds like the best course of action here. And uh, let's actually see. I'm interested. Okay, I am, I am intrigued. Um, I actually wanted to check... Okay, no, we're going to have to do that another time. I wanted to check the garrison at Phaikaeon and the various other places um, because I, I think I personally... Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Are you are you seriously wanting to chase me? Yeah, they're, tr they're trying to get an ambush. Look at this. They're trying to ambush me. This is actually very smart. This is very smart for them. They really do not like me one bit. This the, now, now it is actually logical for them to hate Barney because he has been executing all of their friends and family. So, you know, it is very much more, uh, shall we say, um, <laughs> to be expected that they wouldn't like us that much. However, that's not really going to do do anything. You know, they're 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 literally just going to run after us a little bit and I am just going to run around in circles and they are going to ha well have nothing at all to do they literally cannot do anything and I'm going to try and hope that I can maybe do a little bit of jiggery pokery here and I'm mostly talking about going around to Phi on and just finding one of these guys and just fighting him and he's all separate from the rest of his people now 
and yeah. there you go uh, easy mode right easy mode and now we can literally just get a very very quick auto resolve and uh, we'll take some more of these guys they're probably going to need war mounts which is really really bad but you know that's all right and there's 7300 experience which is even better so our people are going to be leveling up dramatically. Let's have a look. Wow, they basically didn't. Okay, that's surprising. Anyway, let's get those guys. There we are. And once again, we can now execute this fellow. There we are. Very good. Okay, now uh, the funny thing is, after doing this enough, we are indeed going to be causing clans to be completely and utterly eliminated at some point. They are going to be done. They're going to be out of here. And when that when that time comes, obviously enemies, and I'm talking about the enemies of our enemies, they are going to be looking to, you know, do a little bit of something, something. They're going to try to encroach on what we're trying to do here. Um, and yeah. We're otherwise going to have to be, uh, you know, kind of on our guard there. Because the thing is, I don't really want to execute every single vassal in a faction. Because if we execute every single vassal, it is going to happen. The case where we've, we've actually seen this before. Where if you execute every single vassal from a particular faction, all of their fiefs get transferred randomly to somewhere else another faction or something along those lines and it's a little bit unknown from my perspective why that actually happens because there are many many reasons why it would actually make more sense to go to the person that has done the most damage to that particular faction but that is not what happens so you know that's, I guess, neither here, neither here nor there at the moment. Because, as I say, I'm not actually going to be executing every single person from a faction. I just want to make them as weak as possible. So that we can, theoretically, go into a siege. Or, at the very least, maybe I can level up my... Hmm. <laughs> We're only clan tier 3. We're only clan tier 3. Ah, that is so low, actually, all things considered. Okay, let's go in here. Versus this vassal if i can there we go and we are just going to go in for another auto resolve here take a prisoner okay let's see what we can gain here I, I mean technically it would be much much better for me to take you know tier sixes and stuff well tier fives actually but the problem with doing that is it's just it just takes way too long you know it just takes way too long to to get all of these guys to be converted and I'd much prefer to take a tier 4 that I can get in half the time. I don't even know whether it is half the time. But, you know, it feels much quicker. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Okay, so let's execute her real fast. And then we're going to be going into a battle against Tassinor. Tassinor, uh, Tassinor is actually one of the stronger vassals in the game, from what I remember. So what we're going to do is just buy some war mounts here. Buy that. Not going to buy anything else. 9,300. Yeah. You'd think that that would actually be a, a huge amount of money. But just look at what I'm able to do here. Just look at this. Look at that. It's already gone. Look at that. Instant. Yeah, we just have so much loot. Alright, so he's wanting to join the army here. I'm kind of... Yeah, there we go. We managed to stop him. Okay, so now here's the problem. This guy actually has a really, really good army, as you can see. He has not a very good army. Okay. <laughs> I was actually thinking that he had a good army, but apparently not. I'm actually really, really surprised. Okay, that's that's surprising. Weird. Uh, I don't even know. Very strange. Hmm. Okay. Usually, uh, I mean, he has decent combat strength. So that's why I'm kind of perplexed as to what his composition has its strength in. I guess most of these guys, the the heavy horsemen and things like that, I guess that's where the strength is. Yeah, that's probably it, isn't it? Okay, let's just put these guys out here, put them into a shield wall formation. They're already in a loose formation, so we don't need to worry about them. And we can hit this guy. There we go, nice and easy. And then we can maybe do some damage here as well. 
Ooh, never mind, never mind. Yep, that's that's exactly one of the reasons why I was kind of worried about doing this kind of thing, especially with the cataphracts, but I was not wanting to jinx it, you see. Because you know me, right? I, as soon as I say, oh yes, it's more, more than likely I'm going to get killed in this battle, then I will actually almost certainly get killed in that battle, whenever that is. So I generally tend to prefer not saying it. But let's just see if I can actually do something here. Uh, need to be a little bit more... There we go. A little bit more accurate. Thank you. Nice. As long as I can eliminate the cataphracts, that's literally all I need to do, to be honest. And then we are going to win. Yep. I knew I was going to die there. <laughs> As soon as I saw those guys coming my way, I was like, oh yes, that is indeed going to be pretty bad. And you could see here that we basically did almost nothing to them. I mean, I did kill eight, which was pretty good. But unfortunately for me, we are now going to send our people in and we're going to take a lot of casualties as a result of this. But it, I think the, AIs, uh, the AI on our side is actually doing relatively well, as you see right here, because... Yeah, sure, we are indeed losing people, but I think we probably would have lost around this amount anyway. Mm, yeah, probably not. So probably not that much, but we definitely would have lost quite a few because, as I said to you before, this guy actually did have some pretty good units. I mean, he's got elites and he has a bunch of legionaries, apparently. They're the ones that were doing the most damage. Also with the Palatine Guards as well. You know, he's got some he's got some people that can actually deal damage. Okay, so leadership skill is coming in handy here for me. And I will actually try to get away from here now. And this is going to be a troublesome situation for me. Let's see what I can do. Just going to get rid of some of these and then we'll be able to move away. Okay, wow. The army did not even budge. Very surprising. Hmm. Okay. They must have a very important, very important uh, <laughs> arrangement to attend to. And Tassinor is now executed, so I no longer have to deal with him. Is this guy wanting to fight me? No, I don't really want to fight him either. I'd like to actually kill Nikasaur as well, but unfortunately he is just moving on over. And I won't be able to do anything to him at the moment, but oh well, never mind. Anyway, what we're going to do, or shall we say what I'm going to do, is I'm going to be uh, you know, recruiting a couple more people from these villages. And uh, I'm just going to force them into joining us, of course. And I'm going to hope that maybe that's going to push my leadership skill over because I do have 146. I don't think it will actually make any difference, to be honest, but you never know. Maybe it will. And I'm also going to be going to a number of villages. Like, for example, I'm going to go to this village over here and these two villages over here for war mounts. I will try to find as many war mounts as I can get my hands on because we do actually need those. Um quite often i think and if we are going to be recruiting a couple more of these guys and maybe the imperial uh, heavy horsemen too that's going to make a big difference anyway that's going to be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time